Well, Rachel, what was it like working with Dee Reese for the first time when you made Mudbound? Well, Dee and I had sort of known each other from the indie circuit. I think we've both been sort of mutual fans of each other's work and kind of knew each other a little bit socially. Bradford, who had shot Pariah for her, is one of my good friends. And, you know, for whatever reason, I don't know if he wasn't available or if she just thought I was a better fit for this project, but she approached me about it. You know, it's a book originally. And so the script that she, she sent me was sort of the first pass. But from that very first script, it was, you know, it was really sort of my, my dream period. She had me at 1940s, and then everything else was kind of, you know, <laughs> bonus, bonus on that, on that. But I was a big fan of Pariah. I was a big fan of her short, you know, she had a short called Pariah that sort of inspired the feature. So just sort of from the first conversation, it felt like this was a good, good one to do. Well, good is a D. My grandfathers and great uncles, grandmothers and great aunts, father and mother, broke, tilled, tall, planted, plucked, raised, burned, broke again. Worked this land all they lie, this land that never would be theirs. Now, this was shot in just 29 days on location in Louisiana during the summer. You had heat, you had obviously mud, a <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, lot of challenges. Um, tell us a little bit about the challenges of shooting this film. It was, it was brutal. I mean, it, it, we had initially set out to shoot it in January, and of course, between financing and casting and all those things, it sort of pushed and pushed and pushed, and, and next thing you know, we're sort of in the south in July, you know, on a plantation with no respite from the heat. The, the two interiors had no windows. There was sort of no way to air condition them, even if we hypothetically could. You know, mud was sort of, I mean, you, you see the title and you know you're in for it a little bit, but <laughs> mud was, was, you know, if it wasn't rain that we were creating, it was in, you know, in the south in the summer, you sort of get one to two thunderstorms a day. So you're in the middle of a, a sunny scene and two minutes later it's pouring. And then you're sort of cleaning all the gear off and, you know, shuffling through and trying to find some continuity with what you've been doing before. And then we had to make mud when there was no mud. So it was the elements, you know, both man-made and certainly the real elements were really the biggest challenge on that film. Were there instances where it would start raining and you'd just decide, okay, the scene's gonna be in the rain? There was actually a lot of scripted rain. If it started raining, we would go and grab the scenes that were intended to be in the rain. The problem is that it rains there for 20 minutes and then it stops raining. So there was a lot of starting something and then having to figure out ways to match to the thing that you had started. Rachel, there are still a limited number of women shooting Hollywood movies today. Um, what has your experience been as a woman in this business? I mean, my hope is that it's changing and changing fast, and it seems to be. I mean, I feel like there's a real sort of palpable momentum, you know, out in the universe. Not so much politically right now, but I think at least in, in the Hollywood universe where there's a real push to get more women both in front of, you know, directing and better roles for women and certainly for cinematographers. There's still very few of us, you know. I think it's sort of mind-blowing that there's, you know, 51% 50, women and 4% female DPs, probably 0.05% female gaffers, female key grips. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Quite frankly, I mean, this is, you know, our, our world is dealing in emotion, which is something that I think women are, are known for doing quite well. And, you know, it's, it's really about channeling empathy into visual imagery. So I think it's changing. I hope it's changing. Look, I'll never know what happens behind closed doors, you know, or why I don't get hired for something, but I've never had an experience that made me feel any less than. I think the, the big trick is just to get to a point where we're just considered DPs and we're not female DPs. And, you know, when you think of the word doctor or teacher, you don't think gender, and it'd be nice to get to a place where DP meant mm. either, you know, sure. and director meant either, and gaffer meant either. <laughs> Name a director, living or dead, that you never worked with, but you would like to have worked with, and why? There's too many for me. Tarkovsky's one, Kurosawa, Sofia Coppola, Wong Kar Wai, Mir Kusturica. I'm probably butchering the pronunciation. Kusturica, I mean. There are so many. Well, let's pick one, Sofia. What, what about um, her work? I mean, I, I think Sophia has a really incredible sense of visual language in conjunction with, you know, really different storytelling. I feel like every every film she makes is, is quite different, but beautiful in its own way. 
I think there's a respect for the cinematography there, which is always a nice place to, to enter the conversation. Ready? Okay, quiet on set. Mm. And okay. I look down the lens. Yeah. Let's do it. Hi, I'm Margot Robbie. Brian Cranch. Robert Pattinson. John Boyega. I'm Sam Rockwell. Willem Dafoe. Emma Stone. Alison Janney. Guillermo del Toro. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching The Hollywood Reporter. The Hollywood Reporter. The Hollywood Reporter. On YouTube. On YouTube.